Okay, welcome to the Digital Forensics Expert Testimony from uh, Team 3, Avastol Telecommunications. And our forensics experts that are sworn in, Ron, um, Demi is the IT Director, Network Administrator, Evie, uh, the System Admin is Jordan, and the COO is Ron. And uh, the cybersecurity incident occurred at the FVEY Global Economic Summit in the UK. As an overview, expert testimony will present evidence pertaining to the cybersecurity incident and the Canadian international laws. There is a focus on investigation, digital forensics, and new technologies as it pertains to both international laws and digital forensics e-discovery. As an agenda, there's an overview of the projects prior to the testimony, questions to the experts, and followed on by the responses. For project one for the Global Economic Summit, the Canadian Delegates Communications Network was targeted by anomalous activity, causing a denial of service and an inability to use the Canadian network. Attribution analysis was launched to determine the IP addresses, ports, protocols, and host system involved. Further analysis involved a review and creation of 1. Canadian cybersecurity policies, 2. Establishment of the security baseline, 3. Creation of a transnational legal compliance report and matrix, 4. Development of an incident response plan and incident reporting procedure. Project 2. Nations behaving badly. The Canadian cyber team was tasked to analyze and respond to, to anomalous network activities by the CISO of the Canadian Information Systems. The analysis defined the risk of the network intrusion on network and data assets, which derived several reports and artifacts, including one, cybersecurity risk assessment, including a vulnerability matrix, two, incident response plan, three, service level agreement, four, FVEY indicator sharing report, and five, final re forensics report. Project, project three, lockdown. Before the summit, Canada, as well as the FBEY nations, uh, set up its own secure communications network. Anonymous activity was detected on day one and on the following day. Summit attending, attendees were unable to get access to the confidential summit data needed for the conference. Ransomware was detected on computers, and, uh, which prevented access to system resources. An investigated ensued, and the system was restored. Further, the CISO of the Canadian Information Systems received the following reports from the cyber team. One, cyber operations and risk management briefing, including a written evaluation and video presentation. Two, intelligence debriefing on all events that have occurred during the summit. Three, lessons learned video that describe corrective actions and responses taken in hardening the Canadian information system. Four, digital forensics investigation report that outlined the investigation steps and the analysis of network traffic to discover the attack. And four, Protecting the homeland. Protecting the homeland involves the, the diligence of the cybersecurity intelligence analyst of remaining diligent in securing Canadians' uh, network, including a, a report out to the FEEY Global Summit. The Canadian CISL request improvement in supporting procedures for next year's summit to include additional support for elite groups. And uh, in terms of the Canadian group and Avistol, we're covering the telecommunications aspects. As a statement to the court, one, committee has been assembled to hear subject matter, matter expert testimony from Avistol Forensics team regarding the forensics investigation to provide clarity on steps taken to address the cybersecurity risk in Canada that will serve to protect citizens. Two, each expert witness has previously been sworn in and must provide testimony to the best of the knowledge and ability without any outside influence. So question one. What are the legal challenges associated with cyber incidents involving foreign countries? How do internal laws affect e-discovery? And reference and discuss all international laws that may influence a forensic investigation in Canada. Jordan? Yes. In response to those questions, first, legal challenges including the discovery of the location of the attackers as their location has implications for cyber laws and policies. Also. Many nations may require more evidence to provide attribution of an attack. Additionally, the number of locations that an attack may execute from creates additional legal constraints. And finally, 
to counter these challenges, have members of the legal staff be well-versed on regulations pertaining to Canada and FEEY nations, as well as other nations. Also, the legal staff should be part of the incident reporting procedures, incident response plan, so as to have the rapid ability to respond to a variety of national needs to comply with these cybersecurity challenges. Okay, thank you. Question two, what are the legal challenges of accessing and retrieving electronic data evidence stored on foreign soil? Assuming cloud storage was used, what procedures were followed to access, access and retrieve digital evidence stored in the cloud? Ron? Impacts on electronic storage cloud include uh, there's international copyright, property rights laws are loosely enforced or enforced in different ways in different countries. Uh, there are morality differences, for example, uh, views on intellectual property in China uh, are vastly different than the United States, as an example. Uh, constitutions vary and don't carry the same core concepts. Uh, multiple jurisdic jurisdictions and jurisdictional conflicts can make prosecution and extradition difficult, if not impossible. Further, there are inconsistencies in investigation methods and a lack of coordination for investigative measures. Number two, laws vary which make the disclosure of data involved in an incident unavailable or inconsistent based on the laws in a given country, which has a direct impact on electronic storage and cloud storage. E-discovery of cloud storage is compounded by the regulations where the cloud data is stored. And finally, regarding the use of cloud storage, a country's rules apply to where the data is stored. Uh, this is a complication of cloud-based services and storages, storage as jurisdictional differences and rules do vary. As a particular example, the U.S. federal government requires that all vendors must use FedRAMP standards for secure cloud storage and storage where countries are included. Canada and other FEEY nations, while other uh, countries are excluded. Question three. How did the international laws and jurisdictions influence the processes and procedures followed uh, during the forensics investigation? And Jordan? So our response to that question is, steps that the Team 3 took during the forensic investigation included, one, referred to our legal team to recommend particular steps for countries involved in the cyber attack in order to comply with international laws and jurisdictions. Second, a focus was to align the investigation to be compliant with each country's laws involved in the attack. If not, this could lead to the evidence that is inadmissible in court. Thank you. Question four, what conflicts arose between ethics and international laws during the forensics investigations? And how did these conflicts affect the investigations? And further, how were these conflicts mitigated and or resolved? Evie? Ethics is very important when we have to deal with international laws. You have to question whether to follow the regulations and policies set forth by the host country or to abide by your own rules and regulations. After all, you are a guest and you do not want to do, you do not want to break any trust relations with your FBEY nation counterpart. So to mitigate conflicts that arose between ethics and international laws during the forensic investigation team, Team Canada built collaborated policies concerning cybersecurity practices, personal privacy, and legal decrees established by the partner nations. To resolve any conflicts, Team Canada provided a report out to the FVEY partners to support their cybersecurity teams in the FVEY nations, especially in terms of collaboration and compliance. Well, thank you. Question five, what steps were taken to protect the United States soil and citizens during the international investigation and describe any risk to the country, businesses, or citizens from your investigation. Demi? Thank you. In response to that question, to ensure that evidence is admissible in the court of law, legal documentation were presented to the digital forensic team to properly and appropriately acquire evidence. The risk to companies and citizens attending the conference will be handled based on the cybersecurity and private laws for each individual country. For example, if a Canadian citizen was compliant in a cyber attack, the citizen will be held to the standard of the Canadian law on to be determined. Well, thank you. 
And this concludes our expert witness testimony. Uh, thank you very much from Team Canada.